Well, hello, me lovelies. It's me, Ned Natter, and I'm here to chatter. Hope I get to brighten your day. I love to gossip after a long day of taking care of things down here on me Florida farm. But first, it's great to be with you again. Thank you so much for your lovely comments and messages. Today, I want to narrow about a few things. But first up, we need to mention that we don't talk about the news and current affairs. We're all sick and tired of it. And you don't want me reminding you of everything you've already heard and seen, do you? Me show's here to give you a break from it all. A good laugh. Even if it is only once a week on a Wednesday. <laughs> By the way, you can always listen to all me shows again at the website, nednatter.com. Yep, OK, well, put everything down. No, everything. I mean you too, come on. It's time for the Ned Nat Show, and you can't miss this. <laughs> Before we run off and tell you more, let's have a look round the farm. But believe me, oh dear, my young daughter's Dolly's pet ram butt has been corralled. Well, it's the only way. See, me farm cat young Charles needs therapy. Me dog Clay avoids the woolly asshole. And right now, it's butt in the stable wall. Within a few hours, it'll either give up or pass out. Well, I'm not sure where I'll come first. <laughs> Ding Dang Me Farmhand is the only guy I know that goes down six shoe sizes every time he cuts his toenails. <laughs> While on the other hand, his IQ goes down too, yet with every bottle or can of bud. <laughs> if you remember... I'm going to be best man for me lawyer brother Nelson Natter in Beverly Hills. Nelson set February 29th, well, <laughs> for his wedding. You'd have thought a lawyer, though, would have realised it's not a leap year. <laughs> I think he should have gone for April 1st. Yep, instead, well, yep, a fool for sure. <laughs> anyway, it's coming up next week. And I'll be doing my show on the road, so to speak, yep. I hope I get some peace and quiet. Young Nelson is marrying a Japanese-American sex therapist. <laughs> I reckon I'll be calling me new sister-in-law on a regular basis, though. Well, assuming she's OK with free advice for family members, eh? I'll be getting all the latest info direct from LA and Hollywood. And that, that's got to be good, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> these actors, you know, they're always in and out of bed with each other, aren't they? You know, getting married on a whim. And running off with the next person they get cast with. Well, sometimes not not so great if you're um, one of them serial killer films, you know, where everyone takes the role far too seriously. <laughs> Last time I went away for a couple of days, there was plenty of trouble where you're at Two Medicine Farm. Mostly because the wife called 911 when the pizza delivery guy didn't show up on time. <laughs> he got his uh, Mustang stuck in the mud. Then a day later, she called the cops again when she locked herself out of the farmhouse. <laughs> Last but not least, she called out the fire department when she saw smoke coming out of the barn. Of course, as usual, it was only ding-dang, smoking away and dodging work as usual. <laughs> well, I'm worried about this time, you know, if there's a real emergency. Nobody will bother showing up, will they? And to be honest... I can't say I blame him either. You know, last time, the cops and the firefighters needed therapy after seeing the wife. <laughs> yep, she was wearing a bikini. Oh dear. <laughs> and of course, there's me old mum, old Nan, pretending to faint in the hope that one of the firefighters might pick her up. <laughs> still give it a kiss of life. Ooh. For them, I guarantee it'd be the kiss of death. <laughs> This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Show and when I'm not here you can find me and my shows at nednatter.com Well, freedom and free. I, I fought for it. That's what it says on Wilbur, the electrician's t-shirt. He's a veteran, see? And I was thinking, you know, most kids now think everything's free, don't they? That's right, just download it from the internet. It's not stealing, it's just free. Oh dear. I had to call out Wilbur the electrician because old Nan was complaining. Well, nothing new there. <laughs> but this time it was about interference with her TV. Turns out the problem was simple. Yep, her and Elsie, the missus, moved the microwave oven into the living room and plugged it into the same outlet as the TV. They didn't have to walk far, you see, or miss anything that way. 
Now they've asked me for a small freezer to go with it. <laughs> the band's looking better every day, you know. Yep, for me that is. As you know, the wife's mother, Satana Troglodyte, <laughs> is in show business as an actor of sorts. Well, you know, monster movies, that is. <laughs> well, the last day of February marked the opening of the first Vaudeville Theatre back in 1883. Me old mum, old Nan, comes from a Vaudeville family, actually. You know, all stage actors, they were, yep. Nowadays, old Nan still acts quite frequently. Only, no, I got that a bit wrong, didn't I? I mean, she acts up frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Always making a scene, not scenery. And method acted her way in and out of trouble. Mostly at my expense. You should just see her drunk old crow routine. Ooh, it's flawless. Mind you, she's been practising it for years. Yep, she just plays herself. <laughs> of course, before we leave the concept of freedom, you might recall me long-lost relative Skip Natter showed up unexpectedly last week. He'd shipped himself in here by UPS. In a box, yep. His goal was freedom too. From arrest, that is. <laughs> now he thinks he's going to ride out here on the farm. I wouldn't mind it so much if he uh, worked or made himself useful. But no, not Skip, no. He'd rather swindle than work. He's already sent Ding Dang to the store for a thing called a long wait. <laughs> and had him put down a deposit on a pair of skyhooks. <laughs> As Skip likes to say, there's one born every minute. Oh, well, so in readiness for more trouble, I've decided to keep hold of that box, you know, the one he arrived in. If it gets too much, I'll just print off another label and stick him back inside. <laughs> Only I might think of paying the extra, you know, for international. Yep, trouble is, when he gets to China, they won't know what to do with them, will they? Contents, one dickhead. <laughs> Customs value, one dollar. Oh. <laughs> Lonnie, me blind neighbour, is in trouble again too. He visited the nearby cattle farm to buy some unpasteurised milk, his favourite. He put down his white stick and ended up unintentionally picking up a cattle prod. Oh dear. As you know, he likes to accidentally hit women in the store with his famous stick routine, you know, in the hope of picking them up. <laughs> anyway, no success so far. Well, not surprised. Anyway, this time, he really gave the manager of his favourite grocery store a nasty surprise. <laughs> a good woman too, but, you know, old Lonnie had no trouble propelling her through the frozen food oil. <laughs> This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Show, and when I'm not here, you can find me and me shows at nednatter.com. Well, we lovelies, I'm always getting nice messages from you, me listeners, but from time to time I get an odd question too, and I'm featuring them here on me shows. But last time, I got a reminder, yep, about the ag agony uncle feature. Well, oh dear, it's now back in full swing, and the questions have been pouring in. Yep, you wouldn't believe it. So I've decided to have a go again and feature a few in my show. If you remember from way back, I became an agony uncle after I booted one of my ends at night and afterwards realised it wasn't an end at all. Oh dear, it was a cast iron anvil. <laughs> anyway, some of these will make you think. I've got it all here on the Ned Nat Show. Right then. The first of my agony questions comes from Rhonda in Richmond, Rhode Island. Oh, a lot of hours there, dear. And she wanted to know how I felt about this new technology for cows. Yup, a device that measures the number of steps they take. And a microphone listening in to hear them chewing the cud. Oh, must make for the most boring listening experience, eh? <laughs> like, uh, you know, CNN, it's 24 hours a day. Only this is the cow news network. Yep. Oh dear. Of course, I don't need a microphone for me ends. When they lay, I can hear them half a mile away. <laughs> How far is this going to go, you know, this animal monitoring technology? I mean, fitting pigs with bacon width gauges? <laughs> ends with egg counters? Oh, well, trouble is with that is the egg department, you know, is too close to the shite department. 
Yep, the counter wouldn't look too great in a day or two. Have to fit it with a, what do you call it, I suppose, a shite wiper. Yep. Like the windshield kind, only smaller. <laughs> Sheep will have wool thickness monitors and ducks will, hmm, crackometers. <laughs> There's this buddy of me, political commentator, old Rush, you know, a few miles away. He farms ostriches. You need a bleeding ladder to even talk to him. <laughs> and they give you the evil eye too, and then run. They can outrun most things. Most of the time they need a regular speedometer. <laughs> anyway, what do you do with those enormous 2,000 calorie eggs, eh? Mm, well, give them to me wife Elsie, I suppose. <laughs> the second question comes from Steve in Sioux City. He said he'd listened to one of my other shows about swingers and said he'd been involved with wife swapping in the 70s. Hmm, what, what did I think of white swapping, he asked. Well, of course, it's more swinging than swapping these days, uh, me old friend Steve. Of course, you know, uh, swapping sounds a lot better, though. You know, if you're in, still interested, you know, I'd swap me missus any time. Yep, for a new tractor. <laughs> well, let me know, what have you got to barter with, eh? Well, right now, I'm interested in one of them drones. You know, those new drones, yep, you know so I can look round the farm from the comfort of me porch. It'll be a great swap, yep. After all, me Elsie's been droning on at me for years. <laughs> but still, I can't make it up the stairs, let alone get off the ground much. <laughs> the next question comes from Norbert in Nantucket. He's really worried about this new electronic device he's bought. It echoes. Oh dear. Nothing gets done, everything he asks it just bounces back at him, only the voice changes. Yup, to an electronic version of Chinese. <laughs> Did you say Mandarin? No, I said switch on the damn lights and turn down the AC. <laughs> Would you like lice or noodle with that? Oh dear. <laughs> now the next question bothers me, in more the ways than one. For starters, is the pure desecration of a kiddie's book and movie? The question is more like a statement and comes from Willie in Wilmington, Delaware. And it concerns Willy Wonka. <laughs> well, of course I read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory when I was a kid. Back then it was just a great story by an even greater author, eh? But Willie from Wilmington either sees it another way or has a different perspective. He says Willie is bizarre. He means Wonka, not him, that is. I think anyway. <laughs> Right, so he says, uh, what would today's do-gooders and PC mob make of a bunch of kiddies entering a big, odd-looking building at the invitation of a weirdly dressed man who lives mostly on his own and has a decidedly funny walk? <laughs> Long sentence, Willie. <laughs> oh, aside from that, his only employees are a bunch of funny coloured short men who spend every day obsessing over Woolly's Chocolate River. Oh dear. oh dear, again. Am I really reading this? Anyway, it doesn't stop there when he mentions how his mother told him, that's uh, Willy from Wilmington of course, never to take candy from a stranger. The old mum Nan was a bit different though. She used to tell us to go play with the trains. <laughs> no, 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 not the toy ones, not Nan, no, she was talking about the real ones. <laughs> Anyway, back to candy. Willie from Delaware says it's not just a bag of candy, is it? So what does Willie really expect? Yup, he's giving away the old bleeding factory. <laughs> I'm going to leave that right there, Willie from Wilmington. It, it, I'm a bleeding farmer, not a therapist. <laughs> Last up this time, I've got a weird question from Cedric in Charleston. It concerns prenuptial agreements. They're popular, and you'll read more about them with all these news at the moment, all the big divorce cases coming up, won't we? Anyway, Cedric reckons he's going to need a prenup, as he's got a Freudian plant nursery business. Mind you, he says his fiancée is interested in gardening. 
Well, I thought that was the perfect match uh, there for you, Cedric, but uh, I didn't see his meaning. As usual, I'd missed the point, see. It concerns gardening tools and the fact she's been married before. Yup, eight times. <laughs> so, Cedric reckons in this case it relates to an O and a shovel. Yep, Cedric reckons she's an O. And the only digging she does is for gold. Yup, a gold digger. Oh dear. Well, it might be something to consider, Cedric. You know, like you only leave with the same tools you arrive with. <laughs> Maybe throwing a couple of rose bushes, eh? Hmm. In my case, the wife and I have got a prenup. Yup, that surprised you, don't it? Well, she gets to keep her rat dog and the microwave. <laughs> I keep me tractor, cat, dog and pet pig. Simple, isn't it? It's the Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Show. And when I'm not here, you can find me and my shows at nednatter.com. Anyway, moving along quickly. Me swinging nudist neighbour, old Fred, showed me a swinger's dating site on his phone. Oh, dear. I'd rather not, but, you know, he has to try and talk to me about something, you know. I've never seen so many eye masks in one place. It's like a Venetian ball over there, you know. Men and women in eye masks. Oh, well. Mind you, could be disappointing for the ladies, don't you think? See, they're expecting Zorro to show. And end up with someone like old Fred. <laughs> Highly medicated version at most. <laughs> then yesterday, I saw old Fred at the grocery store. Produce department. Yup, buying bananas. And believe me, it's just about to get worse. Well... One, actually. So he says to him, that's a bit, you know, thrifty Fred, you know, I normally get a bunch myself, not just one banana. He said, well, zucchini, a hit and miss, and carrots look plain weird. So, I mean, he's got me head spin, you know, there I am, trying to just get a few spuds. I said, you lost me there, Fred. But he says, he soon puts me straight, you know, he says, oh, well, oh, dear. He was going to a swingers party at the weekend clothes to begin with which i might add well he needed something to show up well in his shorts <laughs> oh dear, that's the last straw and especially on me show i try to keep it clean you know i thought all the old rockers you know they used a pair of socks down there <laughs> then to make matters worse he asked me if i'd like to come along well, i didn't know where to start you know to be polite or plain rude Anyway, I settled on the middle ground and told him I couldn't find me baseball bat anywhere. <laughs> oh dear. Before leaving the subject of old Fred, I finally got feedback from old Rush, the political commentator. If you remember, I gave him the only copy of Fred's buddy's nudist manifesto. <laughs> old Rush been reading it in instalments, you know, in the toilet. He says the inclusion argument's gone too far this time. He reckons you'll never meet a Republican nudist anywhere. All nudists, he says, are Democrats. For starters, nudism and a concealed carry permit don't go hand in hand. <laughs> well, I haven't thought about that. Well, put it this way, it's kind of difficult for one. And where do you keep your spare ammo, he says. <laughs> well, how do you answer that? I just said, I keep mine handy, Rush. The ammo, that is. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Show. And when I'm not here, you can find me and my shows at nednat.com. I got a new feature again this week. It's called Anomalies from Around the World. And no, I'm not talking about myself again, if you don't mind. In each show, I'm going to feature something unusual about a particular country. This time, it's Germany. Do you know that you know, Volkswagen, you know, they bought the old Rolls Royce up, yep, a few years back? At the time when they took over, the head of the Volkswagen company, you know, looked over the Rolls factory and was totally shocked. He reported back to the board in Germany that all the cars rolling off the production line had no engines, a serious oversight of the British car maker. It was only after serious debate they learned that the Rolls Royce engine is in the front of the car, not the back. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They'll never live down that original beetle, will they? <laughs> this is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Show. 
when I'm not here, you can find me in my shows at bednow.com. As you know, my lovely vegan neighbour, young Alice, has been inviting me over to her farm for coffee and vegan cake once a week. Very nice. She's been looking at my horoscope again and she's done this thing called a chart, you know. Oh dear. Well, Alice revealed that I couldn't be less compatible with Elsie the wife if I tried. She's the opposite in more ways than one. Oh dear, I hate it to disappoint young Alice, but I told her straight. Yep, I've known that for years and didn't need to study me astrological position for that. <laughs> I've just learned to keep clear of Elsie, whatever position she's in. <laughs> Me neighbour and part-time political commentator, old Rush, has always got something to say now. And now he's more confident, you know, now he's chatting away for longer things. He's got them, um, you know, the porter potty in the middle of his front yard. Yup, an ugly blue one. <laughs> See, his usual emergency stopping place, the big granddaddy oak was dying off. Rush is back on topic now, and you know, you can guess what his bumper sticker says about a runner in the 2024 election. Oh, yep, it's already there. He's already managed to use the entire bumper, though. Yep, he backed his Lincoln into the porta potty and knocked it clean over. <laughs> oh dear, what a stink. <laughs> Rush had his latest news to offer, though. He's been looking at ostrich farming. Yep, ostriches like his buddy. I didn't have the art to tell him about how it wouldn't be just him shoving his head in the sand round here any longer. <laughs> yep, he'll have company for a change. <laughs> Must have read me mind because he said he was deadly serious. And then as usual, old Rush is ready with another standard statement. Yep, sorry you gotta go, Ned. And off he goes. Oh dear. This is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Show. When I'm not here, you can find me and me shows at nednat.com. By the way, while me long-lost relative Skip Nat stays here on the farm, I'm reminded of another con man. That's right, me agent, 50%. He's lined me up with a new ad this week. It's not exactly topical. Well, not this week anyway. So here goes me lovelies. Have you ever considered work camping? That's right, work camping. Just drive your RV or pull your trailer to us and we'll give you a free place to stop. Yup, free. You'll only have to work 18 hours a day picking things on our farms in exchange for free space for your RV. <laughs> yes, and you can stay until the harvest is over. Only pay rent if you stay out of season. Go to our website today at sweattearsandfreerent.com <laughs> to learn more about this great outdoor opportunity. Oh dear, I was complaining about having to pay for places to park me rented RV when I stop on the way to Beverly Hills. Now I just put me old mum Nan to work every time we stop. <laughs> It'll keep the old crow out of me hair for a few hours. If only I could persuade my own campers, you know, Quinton, Coagulate, here on the farm to work for rent. They don't even get up till lunchtime. And then it takes them another two hours, you know, to put on their makeup. <laughs> and, of course, cook the first meal of the day. They're the only people I know who drink an old bottle of wine for breakfast. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Show. And when I'm not here, you can find me and my shows at nednat.com. Whichever way you dice it, the Ned Nat Show is usually unpasteurised, unfiltered, and hard work. <laughs> Added to that, nothing's free round here, I can tell you. Well, that's not strictly true. The wife else is still free. Yup, it's a good home, that is. Come boy, make me an offer. <laughs> well, that's it, me lovelies. On that note, I better go. So until next time, I'm Ned Natter. Just remember, farmers are getting older, some more than others. This time some new blood came down and gave us an hand. Well, short matters. Without us, you would never need to eat. And without me, your Wednesdays wouldn't be much fun either. <laughs> In the meantime, you can find me and me shows, as I said, at nednat.com, along with them social media links. Come by and say hi. It'd be nice to hear from you. 
all my new shows are going up on YouTube now too. So you can subscribe there too if you like. Thank you so much for listening. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And I hope you'll join me on the Ned Nat show again soon. So until next time, keep a smile on your face. Think positive. Don't sweat that small stuff. The grass is not always greener on the other side. It might just be a freeway. Goodbye, my lovelies. <laughs>